How are we feeling, Action Church? We're feeling good? Yes, yes. Good morning. My name is Eddie. I'm the location pastor here at our Winter Park location. It's always an honor, always a, a privilege, always a blessing to take God's platform, attempting to make much of him. And I'm just so blessed to be here. Uh, I thank him every day for allowing me to, 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 to be on this bus, to, to being on staff and, and being your location pastor. And I'll tell you right now, I just want to thank Pastor Justin and Pastor Stephanie for allowing me the opportunity to lead here, for taking a chance on me. I love you both so much. Uh, you know, I, again, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed to be a part of, of all that God is doing here at Action Church. Uh, we have an amazing culture, and, and we're family. We're family here. I, I, I love that, that, that every time I, I see somebody in need, and, and I go over there, and maybe it's in a hospital, or, or maybe somebody needs benevolence, that, that so many of you, so many of the A-team, so many of the members here at Action have already reached out to them. Like, that's who we are. We're family. We're family, and family, uh, uh, we're vulnerable with, uh, uh, with, with each other, and uh, not a week goes by that I'm out in the foyer, and one of you guys are coming up and say, hey, pastor, what, what can I do for you? And is there anything that I can pray for specifically for you? And uh, we're family, and we're going to be vulnerable right now, and, and yeah, there's something that, that you can pray for uh, specifically to me or specific to me. Uh, I'm struggling, church. Uh, I'm struggling. I'm having a an issue with a family member, and uh, this family member's a, a thorn in my side. Like, like this family member, it's almost every day that this family member gets me agitated, takes away my joy, and, and I need some prayer. Up on the screen here is a, a picture of my family, and uh, those are my kids up on the top. That's my daughter, Catherine. She just got a driver's permit, and uh, the first thing we do when we get in the car, I say, Catherine, listen, what's rule number one? And rule number one is, Whatever you do, do not panic. And the whole way through, I'm panicking on the shotgun on the seat there. <laughs> there goes Laura. She's uh, rocking the uh, Knights of Action merch gear there. Uh, she's uh, uh, about to be a cheerleader at, at TMA. There's my son right there. He's going to be a football player at TMA this year. He goes into sixth grade with his pink bow tie. That's little Mia. Uh, Mia uh, just started doing soccer. She's part of the, uh, of the team, uh, uh, Brian Doors, Pastor Brian's uh, uh, Orlando City team. They just won their third championship, and so they're doing their thing. And, and, and this is my wife here, Nelsa. Can we give her 19 years married? I tell you, she dressed me this morning. I feel a little snug, but it's going to be all right. Uh, uh, she, she's my rock. She's amazing, baby. I love you. You are so beautiful. I, I don't have an issue with any of them. Uh, thank God. God has just blessed me beyond measure. Uh, I have a problem with this one right here. This little one right here. And that's Coco. Now, Coco, Coco thinks she's a human. And the kids think that she's a human. And many of you in here who love animals and love dogs, you think that she's a human. And she's not. She's a dog. <laughs> and it's every single day she bolts out of the house. And the kids are, Daddy, go get her. The vultures are going to get her. The eagles are going to get her. I'm like, baby, the eagles aren't going to get her. And they're crying. And so I got to go out there. And if you're my neighbor and you're watching this this morning online, hey, I'm sorry for, for being in your backyard. Thank you for not calling the police on me. But I'm always going for Coco, 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 <laughs> looking for this little dog. And then every single day, I get the, the privilege, I get the honor, I get the, 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 the duty, the task of walking this little dog. <laughs> and this little dog, she has a pink bow. They have a pink leash for her. And she has, I have to carry the little pink bag, you know, for the number two. Because uh, I'm a responsible citizen, and I don't want to get a fine from the great city of Winter Springs. And so I'm walking this dog down Tuscaloosa every single day. And every single day, it doesn't fail. You guys honk the horn at me. <laughs> honk the horn. If you're watching this or you're, if you're here in this room, please do not honk the horn at me. It's already embarrassing enough <laughs> to be walking with this dog. My manhood has exited as soon as I leave my community. And, 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 and so this dog, I'm, I'm walking her. And I'm thinking, God, what do you want me to share with your people? Like, what is it that, what word do you want to give me that I can, I can really impart on your people? And this little dog, she's, she's going this way, and she's going that way. She thinks she's a pit bull. She's, she's leading me. And, and, and every time I want to tug her back this way, she goes this way. And every time I want to go this way, she goes this way. And it dawned on me, and it really was, was placed on my heart that all of us, are heading in a direction, but there's only one direction that leads us to our intended destiny. That's right. You see, we're all eternal beings having a temporary experience here on this earth. Yeah. 
all made up of, of three parts, a, a body. A body is the part that, that withers, that expires over time. A, a spirit, the spirit is the part of us that, that carries on past this life. And the soul. The soul is made up of our mind, our will, our affections, our ideas, our imagination, our feelings and our emotions. And, and, and the majority of us, the majority of us, uh, of us are led by our feelings and our emotions. You see, there's different things that contribute and that influence and that make up these three different parts. If you don't believe me, try eating a dozen donuts every day for 30 days and see what that does to your body. You're going to have a response to that. Conversely, don't eat anything for 30 days. Your body's going to respond to that. And the same thing applies for the spirit and the same thing applies for the, for the soul. What you see, what you hear, your upbringing, your culture, what you allow to get put in your mind, all of that helps shape a belief system which shapes our perspective, which has a direct impact on the direction in which we go. And all of us, listen here, all of us are going in a certain direction. So the question I have is what direction are you going and who or what is directing you in that direction? And most of us, unfortunately, are led by our feelings. We're led by our emotions. And that's a problem because feelings are meant to be indicators, not dictators. And many of us have exhausted emotions. We live in an imperfect world with imperfect people who make imperfect decisions and, and they hurt us. They disappoint us. They come short. And so many of us, we, we, from this hurt, we, we now see things through a, a lens that has been jaded, a lens that has been fractured. And when we're processing decisions, when we're, we're heading in a direction, most of us are being led by these exhausted emotions. We have to check. We have to process these feelings and these emotions because the reality is this, church. Our feelings, there's a conflict of interest there. Why? Because they're our feelings. And our feelings to us, they feel real. But just because a feeling is real, it doesn't mean that it's right. And I want to go to Scripture. If you have your Bible, please turn to Jonah. And we're going to see what happens here when we're led by our feelings, when we're led by our emotions. And we're going to take it up on the first chapter, verse 1. And I'm going to pull three, three points from this passage here, uh, really showing us what happens when we're led by our feelings. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. So what happens here? God gives Jonah clear direction. And the first thing he does is he gets up and he goes in the opposite direction. And he had a right to. He... he See, Nineveh was the place of the Assyrians, which was the arch enemy of his people. They would torture and, and go into their villages and, and just kill everyone inside. And so he had a reason for not wanting to go there. But he was led by his feelings and his, his emotions, and he went in the opposite direction. Write this down if you're taking notes. Every time that we're led by our feelings and our emotions, it's always going to cost us. It will always cost us. And it cost Jonah here. He bought a ticket. The first thing that happened to him was he purchased a ticket to get on the boat. Let's keep on going. Verse 4. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Freeing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep in the hole. Point number two. Every time we're, we're led by our feelings, led by our emotions, it's always going to cost others. We have a, when, when we make a decision based on our feelings, there are other people that are going to be impacted by that. And I remember being a young teenager, 14, 15 years old, coming home at 2 in the morning. And my mom, I would hear her crying in her room. And she would be praying for me in the room. You see, I didn't recognize it there, and I was numb to it, just like Jonah was in the hold. And he was sleeping while these people are throwing away their cargo overboard because of him, and I was hurting my mom. Who are you hurting by, by your disobedience and by being led by your feelings and your emotions? It's not only going to cost us, it's going to cost others. Let's go down a 
Verse 15, then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Anytime we're led by our feelings, led by our emotions, it's always going to put us in a place we were never intended to be. My man Jonah, he ends up in a, in a whale, in a, in a whale. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I've found myself in a spot saying, how in the world did I get here? Right? It's always going to cost us. It's always going to cost others. And it's always going to put us in a spot we were never intended to be. Now, in chapter 2, Jonah cries out to God, and he goes from a posture of rebellion to a, to a heart and a posture of repentance. And God hears him in his lowest moment, in his lowest point, and he saves him. In chapter 3, Jonah is now obedient. He listens to God, and he goes into the city of Nineveh. And a whole city, the Bible says, is, is, is saved on account of his obedience. Have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered what's on the other side of your obedience? You see, being led by our emotions, being led by our feelings, it's always going to put us at risk. Being led by the body, it's always going to have us in a bad spot as well because we have natural draws, natural tendencies, natural inclinations that go contrary to the direction of our intended destiny. Get this, church. It's only, it's only when we're able to connect our spirit to God that we can walk in the direction of our intended destiny. Like, doesn't that make sense? Like, if we've been created by God for a purpose, wouldn't it make sense that it's only God who can give us the direction of our intended purpose? Yeah. That, that's just common sense, right? Doesn't that make sense there? The problem, however, is that not all of us are connected to God. Oh, that, not, that's the reality. Not all of us in this room, not everybody watching online, is connected to God. Now, you may know that there's a God, Conscience and creation, the, the birds, the, the sea, the, the mountains, the sky, all of that speaks to there being a God. But just because you know there's a God doesn't mean you know him and you have a connection with him. Yeah. I want to give an illustration here. I'm holding a, an iPad. And this is only an illustration. Uh, please don't send emails. The book of Proverbs says that he who takes offense uh, uh, to, to, to a brother is unyielding to God. So don't take offense. It's only an illustration. <laughs> So this is an iPad, uh, iPad, and this is us, illustrational purposes only. We're made up of a couple of parts here, right? This is a, an outer casing, and, and that's our body. And inside the iPad, there's, there's a, a, a computer. Let's think of that as our soul, our mind, our will, emotions, affections, feelings. That's our, that's our soul. And this iPad has an antenna, and the antenna transmits and receives. That's our spirit. And let's say, again, illustrational purposes only. There's, a, there's an app store app. You know the, the little button there, the, the app store app? That's God. He has everything we need. He has apps. He has uh, updates. He has everything we need. And we see him. We know that he's there. And we're, we're pressing the button. We're trying to reach out to God. But without Wi-Fi or without reception, there's no connection. Right? And, and any time you need to activate Wi-Fi or reception, there's always a, a what? An activation. An activation is required. And any time, any time you hear the word activation, there's an activation fee. Right? There's an activation fee. And you see, us as people born into this fallen world, we are, we are born into sin. And sin is what separates us from God. And the Bible is very clear that the wages... The fee, the fee for sin is death. And so in order for us to, to connect to this, this perfect, this amazing God, we must die. But the good news of the gospel is that the activation fee has already been paid. You see, come on. The activation fee has been paid. This God, this amazing God, this creator, he would look down upon humanity. He would look down upon you and would look down upon me. And he would be moved by compassion. He would be moved by grace. He would be moved by love. John 3.16 says, says that God so loved the world that he sent his only son. 
And so moved by compassion, he sends his son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus comes down from his glory, takes up a body, takes up a body, and, and, and he, he lives a perfect life. And he dies a, a criminal's death, a criminal's death for you and for me. He humbles himself to death, death on a cross, brutally beaten, pierced for our transgressions. And it was in the blood, it was in the blood that, that, that it paid the, the fee, the activation fee required to have a relationship, a right standing with God. And that if we believed in him and believed in what he did and, and if we would profess with our mouth and confess, uh, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that he's Lord and we accept what he did, just like that, we have an activation. Just like that, we have an activation and we have eternal life. See, there's only one way to connect. One way to connect to God, and that's Jesus. The Bible is very clear that, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father but through him. Your spirit can't be led by God if you don't have a connection with him. And my prayer all week long is that, that, that your spirit, would, would, would something would happen in your spirit, that the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, would, would, would convict you, not condemn you, would convict you that what I'm telling you today about this Jesus, about this God who, who would come down from his glory and die for you, and that loves you so much that he wants a relationship with you, that, that this would be the day that, that that happens, that you have this connection with God. That's my prayer. That's been my prayer this morning. That was my prayer late last night. I've been praying that that takes place. But I tell you, I, I want to be up front with you, church. I got to be honest with you. Because I don't want you coming back in two days. I, I don't want you coming back in two weeks. I don't want you coming back in two years and saying, Pastor Eddie, that was, that was good. That was great. I, I wanted this activation with, with the creator. You told me that all I had to do was acknowledge what Jesus did. And yes, I felt that in my spirit and I accepted Jesus into my life. And I, and I did that that day. But you failed to tell me this. And so I have a disclaimer. If you're taking notes, write this down. It's not always going to be easy. It's just not going to always, it's not always going to be easy. And throughout scripture, we see Christians who follow Jesus, who were persecuted, who were arrested. In Matthew 24, 9, it says, Jesus is telling this to his disciples, his followers. And if that's you today that accept Jesus in your life and, and want to walk out the, the direction of your intended destiny, here's the disclaimer. Here it is. Then you will be arrested. Some of you will be persecuted. Some of you will be killed. The world will hate you because you are my followers. The world will hate you because you are my followers. And through our scripture, we see this. And I want to go to Matthew 16, verse 21. And Jesus here is, is talking to his disciples, and he's, he's telling them, he's already predicting his death, and he's, he's sharing this with them. Verse 21, from then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day, on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap. You are seeing things merely from a human's point of view, not from God's. Then Jesus said to the disciples, if any of you, if any of you, if any of you want to be my follower, you must, you must give up your own way, your own direction. You must take up your cross and you must follow me. You see what happened here? Peter, he's looking out for Jesus. He's hearing this stuff about Jesus saying that he's going to go and he's going he's to be crucified and he's going to die. And he's not really making sense that he's going to raise again in the third day, which, which was necessary to give us, give us victory over death and victory over sin. And he's telling Jesus, you don't got to do that. And what does Jesus tell him? Get behind me, Satan. He calls him the devil. He calls him the adversary. Now, what's interesting, same exact chapter. Same exact chapter, just a few verses earlier, he's saying, Peter, rock, on you I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Same exact chapter. 
And just a couple of verses later, he's saying, get away from me, Satan. What happened there? See, Jesus thought, I mean, Peter thought rather that, that it was going to be easy. And it's not. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. And I got three practical things here that I believe are going to help us if we decide today to accept Jesus into our life. And the first thing is, we need to be focused. We need to be focused, church. It's not going to be easy. And we need to be focused. We need to know where we're going. We need to know that as we take up this, 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 this calling and as we, we connect to God and he gives us clear direction of our intended destiny, the way to go, that this journey is going to be packed and, and full of, of snares and, 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 and tricks of the enemy. There's a real enemy out there. We live in a fallen world. And the enemy and people will try to disrupt your direction. And we got to know where we're going because it's not going to be easy. we got to be focused. Second thing is we need to be consistent. Consistency over time produces results. You can't go to the gym once a month and expect to have six-pack. I've been trying that for six years and it didn't work. And, so, and, and, and you got to be consistent. Right? It's going to take hard work to be on this path. Right? The, the, the waves are going to come. Jesus says it very clear. In this life, you will have trouble. But we got to have a discipline, church. There has to be a, a plan. you got to live every day with intentionality. That as you wake up, I'm going to seek God in prayer. I'm going to seek God in his word. How can you go in a direction and how can you hear directions clearly from your creator who you're connected with if you never speak to him? Or if he never speaks to you, the word of God is living and it's active. And we got to be in it. We got to be disciplined. Church, you got you to come to church. You got to be consistent. You got to come to church. You got to hear the word of God. You got to allow it to come in to your heart and, and because it's not going to be easy. And the third thing, the third thing is we need others. We need others. We need people in our life. But church, we need the right people. The book of Proverbs says it. Hang out with the wise, become wise. Hang out with fools, get into trouble. That's pretty clear. I, that's pretty clear. Like, who are you hanging with? Who's in your corner? Who's encouraging you along the way? Who, are people telling you what you want to hear or what you need to hear? Right? And that's why we have small groups to build relationships that we believe that, that we are better together that we have a place where we can hold each other accountable and we can encourage each other along the way. We just had a, a global 6K. We partnered with World Vision. We had a, a 6K here at our location and it was an initiative to, uh, to get uh, clean water into the hands of these children in these underdeveloped countries. And man, the 6K, I don't know how many miles it is, but it's far, it's, it's over three and, <laughs> and it was hot and I'm wearing this, it's a thick shirt that they gave you and, and I'm, I'm running around, and uh, about mile marker three, I'm dying. Like, I'm, I am dying. I'm about to give up. But every time I was about to give up, there was somebody. Somebody that came along saw me, hey, pastor, come on. Hey, hey Eddie, you can do it. And that's why we need others in our life, because it's not going to be easy to encourage us along the way. It's not going to be easy. But get this, church. It's not going to be easy, but it will always it will always be impactful. And I saw this firsthand in, in my own life. My dad, he was a, a Christ follower. I remember growing up in, in a Pentecostal church, real charismatic church uh, down in uh, Perrine, Miami, Florida. And uh, there we go, <laughs> in Miami, Florida. And, and this wasn't like, you don't go to church for an hour. A lot of you in here, we, we can plan for being in here now. Three, four hours, you better not even ask what time we're coming home. And my dad, he would be playing the bass. He was the only white guy in there playing the bass. And, uh, and we were, man, we were seeing people moving and, and praising God and grew up understanding that, that Christ was, was so important to have, that, that, that in this life, the only thing that matters is Jesus. And my dad would, would, would follow Jesus in this life, and, and I recognized that it wasn't easy. All right, we, we went, a, we went a, a, a lot of our time uh, in poverty, Growing up in Miami, poverty, it wasn't easy. But, but seeing my dad walk through this and respond the way he did with love and all that, I saw Jesus in him. And so five years ago, my dad gets a, a brain aneurysm. 
and he gets a stroke. And they wheel him into surgery, and he has brain surgery. And he, he comes out of brain surgery, and I'm there, and they're saying they got to bring him right back under. And I told him, I said, hey, Dad, I, I don't know how this is going to pan out, man. Uh, I don't know what this is looking like, man. They're telling me that this and that, and they're not really giving me a lot of answers. And he says, it's okay, son. He says, it's okay. God got me. And he gives me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. This is me and my dad right before he gets wheeled in. And he gives me this thumbs up. And that thumbs up represented that, hey, no matter what comes my way, come hell or high water, that my Lord is with me in the fire. He's with me in whatever comes my way, whatever storm may come my way. And that thumbs up. That thumbs up carries with me. That thumbs up is right here because, yeah, this life is not going to be easy, but it will always be impactful. And the way my dad lived and the way he, he, he responded to things in this life and the faith that he had in a faithful God, it leaves a mark. It leaves an imprint. And you've been created on purpose and for purpose to leave an imprint, to leave a mark on the people that you come in contact with. <laughs> you've been created. Created on mission. You've been called. You've been blessed. Yeah. And you know what? Some two days after this, my dad's in ICU. He's not responding. He has tubes down his throat. Probably one of the hardest seasons of our life. My mom is, who's in attendance back there, she's going crazy. She's, she's trusting God for a miracle. But sometimes God doesn't answer the way that we want him to answer. Yeah. And, and my dad's going through this pain and we would play music, Christian music, and, and he would be crying. So he felt everything, but he couldn't say anything. And seeing my dad through this pain, and a couple guys come into the ICU unit. Pastor Justin, Pastor Parker, they had just launched a location. They had just launched Action Church. They had their own thing to do. They had their own problems, their own worries. But you see, they were living uh, in the direction of their intended destiny. And they said, no, no, hey, I don't know this guy very much, but I'm going to go and see him. I'm going to go give him some encouragement. I'm going to leave an imprint. I'm going to leave a mark on him. And they come in. They come into the hospital room. Pastor Justin says, hey, man, I love you. We're here for you. He didn't even know me. You see, but if that doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, this doesn't happen. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't. I'm, I'm not on God's platform declaring who he is. I, I, like, this never happens. This never happens. And so where are you? The question is, where are you? I believe that all of us in this room, I believe that all of us in, our, in this room, we're, we're in one of four spots. The first spot is the people who, who got it together. The people who have a connection with God, they've accepted Jesus into their life. And for those of you who are in that spot, check out for a second. Then again, don't check out just yet because the second group of people, they think they got it together. They think they're going in the, in the right direction, but the book of Proverbs said there's, there's a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it only leads to death. And on that day, the people that are on, on spot number two, they're going to stand before the Heavenly Father and to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. The third group of people. The third group of people are the people who, who have been going in a, in a direction that you know has been the wrong direction. Just like my man Jonah. That, that God told him which way to go, but he was caught up by his feelings and his emotions. And, and, and these feelings and these emotions were real, and he said, no, no, I'm going to go this way. He was caught up by, by his own desires of the body, of the flesh, and he went in an opposite direction. And many of you have gone in an opposite direction of your intended destiny. And you know it. And now you're in a spot and you're saying to yourself, how did I get here? How did I get here? And you know what God would have had for you. That you have gifts and you have talents. And you look back and you say, man, I'm too far down this path. And the fourth group is you're completely lost. You don't know which way to go. You're confused. You have no connection to God. And I can relate. 
because I was three and four. See, after coming out of the military, I got into real estate and I, I hit big real quick. I'm talking about a ton of money real, real fast. And I was getting the affirmation from the world. And I, I began to think that it was my gifts and my talents and pride and arrogance began to, began to, to swell up in me. And I was caught up in my ways and I got, I got caught up with, with struggles and I wasn't the husband I should have been, wasn't the father I should have been. And God, he would change some circumstances in my life. He would allow me to be in the, in the belly of a whale, get my attention, and the whole market turns and we lose it all. Like we lose it all. Bank account down to $250. They take all my properties, they take everything. They take my cars. We buy this, this little uh, Ford Astro van, $250. This thing would smoke up. You, it, it's shaking. It's shaking. We had milk crates in the back of the seats. My kids would, 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 would be on milk crates. Just sitting there, I get a knock on the door, and it's the IRS. And they hit me with a federal tax lien of $150,000. Just then, my daughter, she gets diagnosed with lupus, stage four kidney failure, depletes all of our reserves, all the houses in foreclosure. And I go to the hospital room one night with my wife, and they're giving her cytoxin and all, and, and the doctor says, Eddie, she's going to die. There's nothing else we could do for her, man. And that night, I went home, and I, I cried out from that place that place of brokenness, that place of, of despair. Asking God to forgive me for all that I had done, for, for going in my own direction. Hours. The next morning, my, my wife calls me. She's crying. So what's going on? She says, they ran panels all night long. They ran testing all night long, and they're saying that her anti-DNA, her complement levels, that all of it, all of it, it's, in with re, it's within the normal range, and she's in remission. And it was then and there that I knew that I had to serve this God. And I said, God, hey, remove these, these things that I'm struggling with, God. I want to follow you. I thank you for hearing me, God. And there was this process. It's this process. It's going to be a process. Right? And there's consequences to decisions. And it wasn't easy. And it wasn't easy, but through time, God would strengthen my character and give me deep roots. And he would allow me to, 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 to just walk in my intended destiny. And in that little red van, I would pick up the homeless people on the way to church in Pine Hills. And then in, in that little red van, I would go and and preach and, 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 and give people bottled waters under the streets and under the bridges in Paramore and doing outreaches, walking already in my intended destiny that God has created me for. Called up the IRS. I said, hey, man, are we good? He said, yeah, Mr. Rivera, we're, we're going to send you a refund check of $19. You overpaid us. He said, and Mr. Rivera, I've never seen this in all my years working for the IRS. I've never seen somebody pay that type of an amount without an offer and compromise. You see, this God, this Jesus, once we walk in the direction of our intended destiny, all things are possible. I want to give you that opportunity right now. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to have this opportunity right now to have a connection, a connection with God. And that's by accepting Jesus into your life. This Jesus, as I mentioned earlier, lived a perfect life, died for you and for me, and he rose on the third day, giving us victory over death, victory over sin. So if that's you right now that wants to activate your connection to God by accepting Jesus, right now where you're at, just please raise your hand as a sign of faith so I can pray with you right now. I see you in the back stadium. I see you, ma'am. I see you, sir. I see you, sir. I see you, sir. I see you, ma'am. I see you, ma'am. Is there anyone else that from this day forward you're going to allow him to lead? Is there any? I see you, ma'am. I see you, sir. Thank you. Yes. You can put down your hands. 
Say a prayer to yourself as I pray it out loud. Something like this, God, I love you. And I thank you. I thank you for having compassion and love and a mercy to, to send your son for me. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Come into my life. Make it different. Allow me to walk. Allow me to walk the direction of my intended destiny. I love you, and I thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Come on, church. Let's give God some praise. Celebrating those decisions.